in a command center in Cairo. Egyptian authorities working against the clock. <laughs> Egypt's health minister on call to receive some of the most vulnerable patients. He's expecting over 30 neonatal babies to enter Egypt. New to the world, but caught in the crossfire as the IDF begins its raid inside Al Shifa Hospital. Time is important, and every single minute uh, that we're, we're not getting them in, the, 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 the incidence or the chances of losing their life is very high. Since November 1st, Injured Palestinians have crossed through the Rafa border into Egypt, the only lifeline to leave Gaza. We dedicated 37 hospitals with more than 11,000 beds for that purpose and more than 1,700 IC units, together with uh, incubators for kids and, and other facilities for renal dialysis and so on and so forth. Would you say that the number of injured Palestinians that are in uh, Egypt right now are in the hundreds? Approaching more, more than 200. In an exclusive, Minister Gaffar takes us to visit patients. This is the champ. This is, this is Abdurrahman. Here at the NASA Medical Institute in Cairo, finally safe, but haunted by what brought them here. Guilt, heartbreak, utter despair. Mohammed Wadia blames himself for his children's injuries. He says he listened to the IDF's warning and moved south from the north. <laughs> Only to be part of an airstrike in Khan Yunus on October 16. He went to buy food, and when he got back, everything was gone, he tells me. His son, Abdul Rahman, just nine years old, and fighting through seven war injuries. His 14 year old sister beside him. Both had shrapnel in their tiny bodies and broken bones. For me, I'm an orthopedic uh, consultant orthopedic surgery consultant and other team is plastic. They say no physical wounds can compare to the mental scars. Can you imagine a child, you have a child, he's scared, he shouldn't scared from um, a cat, a dog, uh, a dark. So uh, when you find that scared from Pom losing his family, it's, it's really shocking. Did you get a warning? Did someone phone you? No, to uh, say you he tells me no, no warning. On his knowledge of Hamas in his building, he says no. We meet the next family, and they recall this strike. 2 p.m., 31st of October, Jabalia camp. Alhad Magid was praying when her husband Rami Mahmoud went out to get food. And when he returned, his house gone. He found Alham by seeing one finger sticking out from the rubble. She survived but two of her children did not. The 15-year-old daughter called a friend before she died, predicting something would happen to her. Rami shows me a video of his son. He got a haircut three days before the strike. They tell me he wanted to look good if he died. For all the survivors we met, one wish binds them all, to return home to Gaza.